Good day, RGV. Today on Valley Por Vida, we've got an exclusive sit down with a Colombian American film director based in Los Angeles. We'll also be breaking down the history of film and filmmaking. And we've got three special guests here in the TV studio with us today to talk about how the city of McAllen is being recognized for being music friendly. <laughs> There's a lot going on and lots to unpack here, so let's get started. The show starts right now. Hi there, and thanks again for joining us today. I'm your host, Danielle Bonda. And if you're a music lover, then you're definitely going to want to pay attention here. Okay, because in some amazing news, the city of McAllen was recently named number one to be certified as a music-friendly community. Apparently, it's one of several Texas cities to receive this designation in our great state of Texas. And it's the first city from here in the Valley. Their team says that they really aim to foster a music scene that reflects the vibrant and diverse heritage that we have here in the 956, which is so awesome. So we're joined now by Angel Trejo and Angelica Ruiz uh, uh, Gualberto to tell us more. How are you guys? Great. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you for, for having yeah, us. Yeah, thank you for having us. <laughs> we are so excited to have you here because this is big news. So kind of tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, how this came to be and what this means. Well, it's it's a really big honor, honestly, to be just like associated with all these other big cities in Texas and for them to recognize McAllen as a growing community. We're like rich in culture and for us to be recognized by music, it's just it's going to take us a whole nother level. Honestly, like uh, we have so many uh, artists and musicians here that I feel are definitely, definitely going to like feel the advantage of this. Like it's just going to grow in so many waves. And so Honestly, I'm super excited for us. I, our team is excited. And the things that we have planned and what we're going to do, I think it's just going to be great for the community. Absolutely. And like you said, the city is growing in music. So maybe talk to us a little bit about that. How, how can we see that and witness that here today? Well, just taking a look at us, we're both a part of an arts collective in McAllen. And that's how we know each other and awesome. how we became involved with the Music Friendly Community Initiative. And I think if even if you're a local here, you're not even aware of these things going on around you. And having something like Music Friendly Community, it's putting out there in the community, you know, we don't need to bring anyone yeah. uh, you know, uh, from outwards in. Yeah. We have it already here. And you see that through uh, initiatives and collectives like this. I love that so much. What you said is so important. Uh, and, and so kind of to touch base on that a little bit more, why do you think it's so important, you know, for Valley residents and especially McAllen uh, to learn about uh, appreciating the sound of music? Well, I mean, if we got like go far back into like where like Texas is as music and what we've like seen, like, you know, yeah. huge artists, I mean, they're gonna be able to recognize that McAllen here the Valley, like we have the exact same thing. We have growing artists. Yeah. They're gonna to love to see like that their own talents, people that they might've known when they were younger or anything <laughs> like that. And just run into someone like, okay, great. That person's from McAllen. Like it's time for like us to be established, to grow our community and see like we have artists as well. And I feel like we're right there on that, that edge point where it's like, oh, you know what? we do have these people like, and our community is going to see that. 100%. Absolutely. Uh, and you know, we're so proud of the progress that McAllen has made thus far. Living proof right here, you guys exhibit A, uh, but just also how the entire city is helping to put the Valley on the map. Uh, so with that in mind, I mean, what do you think is next in terms of music when it comes to the future of McAllen? <laughs> as far as the future of McAllen, I think, what we're doing is cultivating new generations yeah. that come to appreciate art in their community. Because beyond showing oh, what we can do or match, which is like amazing, and that's a great like baseline, we're creating a higher quality of life for our children and future generations that are growing up. And it can be a way of life, not just some distant, oh, you're gonna go to class, or you're gonna perform. It's just bringing the entire community up as a whole. So I see future generations taking it for granted in a good way that, yeah. hey, we're a music-friendly community. <laughs> uh, how was it ever anything different? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's amazing. Now, we still have a little bit more time, so I was wondering if you could just kind of share what you want viewers to know about McAllen and everything going on in music. I mean, if there was just one takeaway, besides we all love music and support music, I mean, Definitely. what do you think that is? <laughs> well, I mean, one important takeaway, honestly, is that, you know, music is alive. Like, it's alive in McAllen. Like, it's like, 
even if you're not around, just know that it's going. Like how Angelica had mentioned, like we are there to witness like our future happening in front of us. Like we see kids playing music all day, every day, learning instruments and just, they're gonna grow from that and our kids, the future are gonna see that. Amazing. Well, thank you both so much for being Thanks here. So we thank appreciate you for everything us. you're doing. And you guys, as their team says, it's so important to help promote the incredible musical talent of our local artists like them. <laughs> and this recognition is definitely a good start. And speaking of talent, our team actually had the opportunity to have an exclusive sit down with a Colombian film director who's actually right now based in Los Angeles. And he's definitely known in the film industry for his attention to detail when it comes to every story that he shares on the big screen. Green. You see, he uses his craft to bring stories to life, and in his career, his work has received awards in Prague, Spain, Holland, and even some in Colombia. Uh, I mean, he's won over 30 advertising awards on an international level, and that even includes two of the very prestigious awards that you see on screen right now. Hi everyone, I'm so happy to be here. My name is Luis Felipe Delgado. My friends call me a Pipe Delgado and I'm a multimedia director and a specialist. Um, I do, as my title says, I do the film, I do video, I do social media. Um, I'm a storyteller, so you know, that's, that's what I do. So I'm happy to be here and yeah, to talk to you all. So the first project that I'm really proud of and I would like to tell you guys about, it, it was called Remangate and it was an advertisement campaign that we did back in Colombia uh, to, um, to bring uh, awareness uh, about uh, the landmine problem that we used to have. Unfortunately, we still have it, but uh, hopefully, I mean, thanks to that campaign in part, um, it, uh, it, made, it, uh, it helped the people to, to conscientize about like how horrible that was. So this was basically an advertisement campaign where I directed the multimedia video for it. Even the president of Colombia was part of the video. Uh, and it was very exciting because when you do like, we do all type of contents, right? And when you do advertisement or storytelling, but when you do something that actually can make a change, you know, that, it, you know, like it's about like giving back to, to the people and, and especially in countries like ours that uh, we have uh, so many social issues. Uh, so when, you're, when your work actually changes something, it means uh, a lot. So, so that, um, that project, not only was a special because uh, it uh, it made people like like uh, aware of what was going on uh, regarding that issue, uh, how many people were suffering, and also, I mean, on the side, it, it was very successful. We won a, a can of award, cans awards with that. We so so, but that's to me that's secondary. It's more it's more important about um, what can you do with your craft to to help out. So that will be maybe the first one. And then more recently, uh, the last project that we did, so many years later, <laughs> I moved to, to, to the United States. Uh, I've been living here in LA for about five years and a half. And then here I, got, I, I started to get more involved in the, in the multimedia and film industry, right? Uh, so we just finished a short film that is called Sophia's Eclipse. Uh, which um, is going to be premiered soon in uh, in the festival circuit. We're still, you know, we can, uh, we're still working on it. Like we don't, uh, we can, we can, which is going to be premiered soon in the festival, in the film festival circuit this year. And we are very excited about it. This, uh, this is a narrative short film. It's about uh, where, where I had the chance to write, produce and direct. So, um, uh, and, and this is about, uh, this is about a little girl, uh, Sophia, that, um, Unfortunately, her dad passes away uh, on a mine crash accident. Be sure to visit his IMDb page to learn all about the various film projects that he's been able to shed his talent on. And you can also check out his website to scroll through so many pieces of his work. Music videos, advertisement videos, I mean, you name it, he's most likely filmed it. And if you're on social media, as many of us are, then you can definitely visit his Instagram page to learn all about uh, the ins and outs of his life, as well as, uh, you know, being a professional film director in LA. Hey, if you love watching his movies, then be sure to tell him so. And you can also 
throw in that your friends over at Valley Por Vida sent you. <laughs> you know, as with any industry, oftentimes it's hard for us to recognize exactly what it takes to do the job. The film industry is a meticulous one and we're so happy to see that people like him are succeeding in the best ways. But even if we can, uh, you know, appreciate one of his films, <laughs> then can we really appreciate the art of film overall? There's definitely a lot that goes into movie making and film directing, so <laughs> let's go ahead and dive in deeper with a little history. First up, we kind of need to know uh, that we're starting from the beginning, okay? I'm talking when, when was film even invented? <laughs> According to LegacyBox.com, apparently the art of film came to our world back in the 1890s. The site says that motion pictures with the first moving cameras were actually a product of the 1880s, but that, you know, later on led to, of course, bigger and bigger and more innovative productions and equipment for commercialized and entertainment purposes. It even outlines that before Hollywood really became a hotspot for film, it was well, kind of boring. <laughs> this is just because, uh, you know, film was really short and even just one scene would only take about a minute long. The site says that this is why a lot of films were usually silent pictures, which is very interesting. Now the site also says that some of the earliest forms of short films uh, didn't necessarily you know have music in the film but were planned with bands performing accompaniment during the film. This could mean that you'd be you know watching a film with live music playing in the theater as film uh, played on a screen which is pretty cool. I mean we may not think about it very often since movies today naturally have you know music embedded into them but getting live bands to play during films like that I mean that was pretty cool creative, uh, you know, for the movie scene at the time, and I love that. See, film creators and directors are always having to come up with new and fun ways to keep an audience's attention, and this was actually made easier with the panorama shot that was developed later on in 1987. The site says that the pan shot was great because before then, cameras were, you know, just really stationary, and it was kind of a lot of work to move the whole camera and the tripod every single time that you needed to get a different angle. <laughs> so this was definitely a good move for the future of film, and of course, for cinematography. And since improvements are always being made, it was great news when the very first feature-length film was produced in 1906. The site says it was an Australian film that was over one hour long, and the real length was about 4,000 feet. <laughs> wow. Of course, today there are so many different methods of film watching, including digital streaming on your you know, TV at home, uh, logging into your smartphones and your devices, and of course attending the movie theater. And it turns out that we've been, you know, enjoying cinematic productions at the theater for quite a while now. The site says that the very first theater opened in 1907, and before then, films were usually just, you know, shows at big traditional theater venues or carnivals. So it was definitely a huge mark on all that was to follow, which is awesome. All right, well, now it's time to take a commercial break, and then we've got to look at your local weather updates. But be sure to stay tuned because Valley Por Vida is going to be right back. And we're going to uh, have another amazing guest right here in studio with us. She's going to be sharing more details on how the city of McAllen is being recognized for their efforts to support music and musicians in the Valley. We'll also talk a little bit about the benefits of learning to read, write, and play music with an all-new no all Did You Know segment. Plus, one school district is sharing details on an Essential Educator Award, how this honor is benefiting, benefiting all of our students. We've got all that and so much more when we return. <laughs> 